My name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's flying control systems. We shall be referring to the wartime Air Ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. The Lancaster is normally fitted with flying controls for a single pilot and fitted with a Mark IV three axis automatic controls. A collapsible seat is provided for the flight engineer on the starboard side of the cockpit. The ailerons are controlled by the rotation of the hand wheel on the control column. And the elevators are controlled by the fore and aft movement of the control column. The rudders are controlled by the U-shaped rudder pedals which are pivoted at the top and are mounted behind the pilot's instrument panel. The rudder, elevator and aileron trimming tabs are operated from a control box mounted on the pilot's floor on the starboard side of the seat. Here's a general arrangement diagram showing the Lancaster's flying controls. The control column is built up into a box section from light alloy sheets riveted together. The centre panel at the front is detachable being secured by screws and Simmons nuts to allow for easy access to the control chains and cables. In the top of the control column is the hand wheel spindle and bearings and the sprocket for the aileron controls. The base of the control column is bolted to a cross shaft mounted on the underside of the pilot's floor. The hand wheel incorporates the wheel brake lever. The rudder is controlled by means of conventional type U-shaped pedals, pivoted on torque shafts behind the pilot's instrument panel. The shafts are interconnected by means of spur gears causing them to rotate in opposite directions. To limit the movement of the pedals, a stop bracket is fitted at the forward end of the pilot's floor. The pedals themselves are of tubular construction and can be adjusted by means of a spring-loaded ratchet. The ailerons are controlled by the rotation of the pilot's hand wheel, then by means of chains and sprockets to a torque shaft mounted on the main floor beneath the pilot's floor. The control from this point is by means of chains, sprockets, tie rods and cables running along the port side of the fuselage to a double-armed lever on the rear face of the rear spar. The lever is a light alloy forging mounted on the extruded channel section, a stop bracket being provided to limit the movement. A jointed light alloy push-pull control tube attached to the top arm of the lever and supported by toughnel bearings mounted on the ribs extends to another lever mounted on the fore and aft torque shaft in the trailing edge of the main plane at the inner end of the aileron. At the transport joint, a double-ended adjustment screw with left and right-handed threads is screwed into the end sockets of the tubes and is locked with bolts after the initial setting. An access door is fitted in the upper joint cover. At the rear end of the torque shaft is mounted a rocking lever which actuates the aileron operating fork. The operating fork is secured by a centre pin through a bracket riveted to the inner end of the aileron spar, the aileron inner hinge being mounted at the end of this bracket. The lever on the torque shaft and the aileron operating fork are both light alloy forgings with ball races at all bearing points. A self-aligning bearing is used where the rocking lever connects with the aileron operating fork. Elevator control is obtained via the lower end of the control column on the underside of the pilot's floor. It is attached to a cross shaft mounted on two bull race bearings. This shaft consists of a forging bolted to the base of the control column and a transmission tube of non-magnetic steel on the port end of which is mounted a lever for the elevator push-pull tube and a sprocket quadrant for the automatic controls chain. 
Both the lever and the quadrant are light alloy forgings. Stopped brackets are fitted onto the pilot's floor to limit the fore and aft movement of the control column. From the elevator lever, a jointed push-pull control tube supported by spherical bearings runs aft through the spars and formers along the port side of the fuselage. The aft section of the control tube is a square section and supported in square bearings of mild steel in formers 33 and 34. From a bracket on the square rod, a connecting rod extends aft to a lever on the underside of the elevator spar torque shaft. The rudder control push-pull rods are similar to those of the elevator, running from a bracket on the port rudder pedal to a square section rod at formers 32 and 33, from which a connecting rod operates a lever between the tailplane spars. This lever is mounted on a vertical spindle which revolves in ball bearings, the bearing housing being attached to the top and bottom booms of rib number one. Attached to this lever is a second lever which is interconnected by means of push-pull rods to one arm of the L-shaped lever at each end of the tailplane. The outer levers are light alloy forgings and are mounted in a similar manner to the centre lever. The second arm of the outer lever is interconnected with the actuating lever on the rudder by means of an adjustable connecting rod which has a ball race fitted at each end. The trimming tab control gearbox is a light alloy casting bolted to the pilot's floor. The end plates being detachable to allow easy access to the bevel gears which operate the various controls. These gears run in oil light bearings fitted in bosses formed in the casting. Each control has an independent indicator inset in the top of the box. The elevator trimming tabs are operated from a hand wheel on the control gearbox from which cables run downwards to the main floor and then through the intercostals to pulley brackets on the port side of the main floor and on to form a C. From here the cables run aft along the port side of the fuselage through fair leads on the formers in the bomb compartment to a pulley bracket on former 39. Then the cables pass up into the tailplane round a further pulley and then outboard in each direction along the tailplane. Chains attached to the ends of the cables pass round sprockets in bearings passing through the elevator spar. Each sprocket is screwed internally and has an eye bolt screwed into it which picks up a connecting rod, the other end of which is attached to the operating lever on the tab. Rotation of the socket moves the connecting rod and therefore the tab. The balance tabs on the elevators are interconnected to an arm on the elevator hinge bracket by a rod attached to a lever on the lower surface of the tab. When the elevator is moved, the tab is automatically moved in the opposite direction. The rudder trimming tab is operated from a hand wheel on the control gearbox, from which cables run downwards to the main floor and then through the intercostals to pulley brackets on the port side of the main floor. From here, the cables run aft along the port side of the fuselage, through fair leads on the formers in the bomb compartment, to pulley brackets mounted aft of former 37. Then the cables pass up to a pulley bracket in the tailplane, and then outboard in each direction along the tailplane. Chains attached to the ends of the cables pass round sprockets in bearing housings on the forward faces of the rear fin posts and are themselves connected together by a balance cable along the tailplane. The sprockets are attached to shafts which incorporate universal joints at the rudder hinge lines. After this joint, the shaft has a turnbuckle action and adjusts a connecting rod which actuates a short lever on the rudder trimming tab. The aileron trimming tab 
is on the inboard end of the starboard aileron only and is controlled from a hand wheel on the control gearbox. Cables pass from this control box to three double pulleys under the floor members of formers C and D. They then run aft along the starboard side of the fuselage through fair leads on the formers in the bomb compartment to a double pulley at former 16. From here, the cables pass up through the floor, round a further pulley and through the fuselage skin in the trailing edge portion of the main plane. The cables are carried in fair leads in the main plane ribs and pass into the aileron to the trimming tab control gear. This gear consists of a cable bobbin on a screwed spindle operating a threaded sleeve on the end of the control rod connecting to the tab. A balance tab is fitted to each aileron and is connected to an eye bolt on the aileron hinge arm by a rod attached to a lever on the upper surface of the tab. Well that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing and also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notification when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.